speaker for this webinar this afternoon. Dr. Brennan's mental health counselor in the state of Washington. She has a PhD in counselor education and supervision at the Regent University. She was a counselor psychotherapist at Stillwater's Counseling, Bremington, Washington from 2013 to 2015. She's both a presenter and a speaker. Dr. Fortune has developed various workshops like I win, you win, resolving conflict in your marriage. That was in 2007. Another workshop she developed was From Okay to Awesome, Keeping Your Marriage Healthy in Today's America. That was in 2008. Parenting Your American Born Child in 2009. Your Marriage, Your Ministry, Keeping the Flame of Your Marriage Burning in the Face of Ministry Burnout, 2016 and the point of marriage with her husband, Don Fortune, in 2019. She has published sections for numerous magazines like Filipina Magazine, The Monterey Review Consulting and Technology, CES Bulletin, Regent University. She also had once a host of a radio segment, You've Got a Brand, by Far East Broadcasting Company while, when he, she was still in the Philippines. Dr. Fortune also founded the Women at the Well Ministry, a support group for Filipino-American women in Kitap country. Co-founder and leader of Vision Loves Filipino Ministries, it's a ministry to the Filipino-American community in Kitap country. She's also an, the editor-in-chief of the Monterey Review Journal for Monterey Institute of International Studies in California, among many others. Currently, she is a psychotherapist at the Peninsula Counseling Center, a wife and a mother of three daughters. She also has twins. She enjoys writing, reading, journaling, playing guitar, going on long trips with her family and Saturday break breakfast date with her husband. She also loves networking and organizing school and family reunions. Her passion in life is to see people achieve emotional wholeness so they can enjoy healthy and satisfying relationships and become vital members of their communities. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my deepest honor to present to you our first speaker, Dr. Brenda Valenzuela Fortune. Dr. Brenz? Yes. Yes. Take it Good. away. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, good morning. Greetings, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Bryce, for that glowing introduction. So, um, teachers, uh, students, and school administrators, you're the movers and shakers in this wonderful world of education. And what an honor and privilege to be here today. And you do play an awesome role in the world of education. So, thank you very much. So wherever you may be, I hope that you're well and fine. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity, Dr. Bryce. If you had uh, asked, told me a few weeks ago if, that I would be speaking at a webinar on coping with the pandemic, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> Only a few weeks ago, I would not have imagined a world such as we are experiencing today. It's quite different. But here we are, and I don't think I need to belabor the point. Uh, we are coping with this together in, in the world right now. So the stay-at-home directive in the state of Washington was implemented on March 23rd. So as of today, we have been pretty much locked down for about 69 days. And like probably most of you, I was thrust into a do or die situation. I mean, almost li literally, uh, it was either adapt or perish. So before COVID-19, I, I only saw my patients face to face in my office. Like many of you were probably lecturing and teaching in actual brick and mortar, mortar classrooms. And then Almost overnight, I transitioned into delivering counseling services exclusively via video, as most likely many of you found yourselves in virtual classrooms as well. So the learning curve was 
quite steep and I floundered for a bit, but I knew that I needed to adapt and maintain a level of mental soundness if I were to stay effective for my clients. And I'm sure you can relate uh, with your students as well. So my topic today is on thriving at home with high mental soundness. All right, Let's see. So, so we are several weeks into this pandemic now. And one thing about the human spirit is our ability to rise above difficult circumstances. So the collective global trauma that we all experience is beginning to wane as we have learned to pull ourselves together and make sure. All right, proceeding to the next um, speaker, ladies and gentlemen, discussing how we can reimagine school operations. So I know that all the school owners in the room right now are glued and are ready with their pens and papers. Let me first introduce to you our second resource person for this webinar, Professor Michael Benedict A. Lopez. In the last 15 years, Professor Lopez has been involved in entrepreneurship education and services for various private and public sector institutions. He is also an entrepreneur having established G889 Manufacturing Corporation in 2006. In the last 10 years, Professor Lopez has worked in the Department of Education to help develop the country's school system. Among his projects were the training school division superintendents and school principals on strategic planning and developing teaching materials and case studies for deaf ed schools. Mr. Lopez is a current professor at the Ateneo Graduate School of Business and the Asian Center for Entrepreneurship. He is also a consultant for Bayan Academy and has authored four published books on business and entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure and honor to present to you a wonderful professor, my professor back in the Ateneo Graduate School, Professor Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bryce, for the introduction. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bryce, uh, for the introduction. Um, and I want to welcome the participants here today, and I'm glad that you're, you're safe. Uh, my topic for today is actually reimagining of school operations and its implications of COVID-19 to school operations management and strategy. But I'll, I'll share my slide first. Okay, so this is my topic, implications on school operations management and strategy. Okay, so let's reimagine the school model. But before reimagining, before going forward, let's take a step back and ask ourselves, what was what's the, what was the old normal or what was the old school model? Well, I guess this picture captures it. As you can see from the photo, uh, the old school is really a place. It's a place of learning. It's a place where our students would go uh, to meet their teachers to receive face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. It's also a place where our students get to interact with their peers and with their teachers. So pretty much the old the school that we know is really a place, a community. Uh, people congregate there and learn from one another. But obviously now things are a bit different. Okay, what's the new normal? I think it looks pretty much like this. Now there's a distance between the student and the school. And then this uh, distance is being bridged by technology. Now there are a lot of terminologies to it. Like there's online learning, there's distance learning, there's remote learning, so on and so forth. But the, the basic essence really, the essence here is that education services now are being forced to online platforms. Now, this is not something new. It's been there for 15 or so years ago you know, with the advances of technology, with the internet, and people wanting to find convenient ways of 
of doing things online. So it's not something new. Uh, unfortunately, the problem what, that we have right now is that COVID-19 accelerated things. Our third speaker is Amit Mahinsarya. He is the co-founder and CEO of Impartus Innovation. It is um, an Indian company and he actually also was an alumnus of um, IIM Lucknow and associated with education sector for more than 12 years. Amit is a very good partner of uh, Hero Brainshare. And because of this wonderful Impartus Innovation product, which does live uh, lecture capture, live online classes, Amit is bringing videos into the mainstream, uh, mainstream learning and helping education institutes to go online. I'm not gonna say more about Amit, but I will let him do a demo, introduce the company, and walk us through. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the co-founder and CEO of Impartus Innovation, straight from India. Amit, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate Am I audible? Very audible. Thank you. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone, and thanks. Thanks for your time and joining this webinar. So apologies, in fact, I have a hard stop in another 25 minutes. So apologies for that. One good thing is I'll, I'll make it crisp and short so, so that I, I pass on the message. I'll not take much of your time. And just before I start on the demo, I'll give a brief background about myself that will set the context. So in fact, I've been associated with education sector for the past 12 years, but have never taught so I am not a teacher and Impartus does not know how to teach or what to teach. We are a tech company, but working only for the education sector. So personally, in fact, I, I interact with hundreds of educators every month, closely understanding their pain points and trying to solve for that. So that's, that's a brief background about, about myself. Let me share my screen. Give me one second. So is my screen visible? I hope my screen is visible, Bryce. Yes. We can see it. We can see it. Sure. So Impartus is, is a video platform for the purpose of taking learning beyond classrooms. It was founded in 2013. We have offices in India and Hong Kong, and we are serving mainly the our two key markets are India and Southeast Asia. And when we started in 2013, this was the purpose that we said, how using video technology can we take learning beyond classrooms? We never thought that COVID would expedite a lot of things, but but this has changed the way things are happening now. And when I talk to educators, my biggest pitch or my biggest thing, first thing that I tell to them is live online learning is very different from online meeting or video conferencing solutions. Like right now we are using Zoom to do a meeting and live, live classes are very different. A teacher teaches in a very different mode. And what we see daily is teachers struggling with tech tools. Their focus should be on teaching, not, not how to play with tech tools. Student engagement is poor. In fact, this is again an important thing which I say in my live classes is in a meeting, if even if few participants are mute throughout, it doesn't matter. But in a class, every student is equi equitable. Every student has to engage. So student engagement is key in live classes. And second is you'll never go back and revisit a meeting again. But Thank you.